All right, Roscoe, let's uh, let's keep this day moving. We talked about the rate confirmation a little bit ago. What do you want to talk about next? Well, after the rate confirmation comes the bill of lading, commonly referred to as a BOL. Now, do you realize the bill of lading is actually written in U.S. code? Well, I didn't know that. Federal Code of Regulations, Title 49. And that is broken down into Section 1035, Part 1. Well, this is a big legal document. This then. is law. What, what the is bill of a, lading uh, is law. Yow. So it's not something to sneeze at. It's something, take a minute and understand it. You can Google this document. Just Google Title 49, 1035.1. That's... Uh, that's, but we're going to explain it to you the best we can, and we're going to actually teach you why it's important to you as far as getting paid. <laughs> well, it's a, it is the the piece of paper that gets you paid, basically. It really is. I mean, what is the what is a bill of lading? A bill of lading is a re, a, the receipt that you get from the uh, shipper. the shipper yeah. once you deliver. Well, no, the, isn't it? You, you pick your bill of lading up at the shipper. Right? When you put that freight uh, on your truck, you get a bill of lading. That bill of lading should tell you a few things. Number one, it should tell you what's on the truck. I tell you what, if if <laughs> if the bill of lading says strawberries and you've got onions, bad. That's you bad. might have a problem. Yeah. Or so worse. make sure if they if they'll let you uh, let you in that you see what's going on in your truck. And a lot of places won't. They're sealed boxes. They're on pallets. They're shrink wrapped. So. You don't have to be Inspector Clouseau here, but be aware. If it says 12 pallets and they put in three, you got a problem. Yeah. If they say 12 pallets and they put in 28 pallets, you might want to get more money. Yeah, so just be aware of, what, of what's going on in your truck. Because what's on the bill of lading is what they're going to expect to unload from your truck when you get to the other side. So this is a legal document. It's it's not an option. If if you pick up a tractor in a farmer's field that's picking up in Indiana and driving down to Atlanta, don't expect the, the tractor seller, don't expect that farmer to have a bill of lading. Where do you get one? Truck, a good truck stop. A good truck stop. Not just any truck stop, <laughs> but a good truck stop. You should have those in the back of your seat, a glove box. Um, you should have some blank bill of yeah, lading. You can get copies and keep them there, and uh, with a with a pencil or pen, so you can fill it out. And then it makes you legal. If you get stopped, you got all the, the stuff on your on your uh, on your truck, right? And the highway patrol stops you. Uh, That's not stolen yeah, goods, right? So You've you got the name of the shipper, the name of the receiver, the um, the the goods, the high, the amount, the weight, uh, that type of stuff. So the bill of lading, another thing you want to do, I, I ran into a problem the other day and it really kind of made me nervous. I had a bill of lading that um, was, had the address in, somewhere in Canada. Oh yeah, that was a nightmare for a minute. Well, it was, was for me. It wasn't for the, <laughs> yeah. the owner of the truck because he didn't realize. He didn't know. But and it worked out anyway. But We had a rate confirmation with one address. And we had a bill of lading with the other. Fortunately, the rate confirmation was right because that's where my driver drove 700 miles. And I was a little nervous that he might have been in the wrong place. Yeah. And I didn't know if he had a passport to get into Canada. So how do you avoid that problem? So one of the things you should do is check your bill of lading. Make there sure the go. freight matches up with what's going on in your truck. Make sure the address... And where it's going. <laughs> Now, the, the consignee might be different than the shipper or receiver, all right? There may be three parties to one bill of lading. Um, but a good practice is to make sure to handwrite, even if you have to do it and get them to sign it, handwrite the address of where you're going to, to deliver the freight on the bill of lading. That takes away any guessworks. And... You want to get the broker involved if things don't match right away, before you leave. Um, what I'll do is I'll just have the broker send me an email and say, oh, it's okay, send it to the address we asked you to on the rate confirmation. Um, you need something other than just a wing and a prayer to make sure that everything matches. Because 
you might have a new person at the shipper that's putting the wrong freight, going to the wrong location in your truck. Anyone can make a mistake. We want to guard against that. And if you're 700 miles away and they don't want the freight, then sometimes the freight's it not back. worth yeah. taking back. It's not worth it to the person making the freight. There you go. I've actually seen drivers get take freight off the back of their truck and put it in dumpsters along the way. So you got to be mindful of, of that kind of stuff. You, you'll evolve, evolve. You will avoid a lot of problems by being proactive in your business. And just, that's why we're doing this video. Right. Just be a little aware. Make sure your paperwork is in order. Make sure it says what it's supposed to say. Now, I, I ju we just went over this in our last video, but I'm, I'm going to go over it in this video, too. In order to get paid, generally, you need a rate confirmation and a bill of lading. The rate confirmation is done before you make your pickup. This is the contract between the owner of the truck and the broker who's paying the truck. The rate confirmation has three simple things. Pickup, drop-off, and how much they're paying. Plus the notes. The, the bill of lading... Has this should have very much the same information, the amount of product, the weight. So, what, but once not on this bill of lading is the name of the broker. The name of the driver a lot of times isn't on this. We want you to write that right on the bill of lading. Just use a simple pen. Because when we're when we're putting it through the system, if that information is not there, it could cause confusion. Could could. Uh, uh, take more take longer to get you paid and if you call me in three weeks because something went wrong somewhere and if we have the data properly i can pull a file up i don't care if it's a week old or 10 years old i can pull it up instantly right so you need on this what do you need the data to pick up yep the driver's name the broker the run number. That's it. The consignee and the shipper. That's on the bill. That's on the bill. Yeah, but, Make sure but it's the, on there. The name of the driver, right. the pickup date may or may not be, but if you handwrite it, it's easy to, to take it. Yeah, make sure Because it's what there. happens is if, if you're working with a with an, somebody helping you do your administration, I might get 30 of these in in a day. And I might get 30 of these in in a day. And, and if it's not easy to take this piece of paper and put it with this piece of paper... It's not easy to get you paid because in order for you to get paid, the company's going to want a bill of lading and a rate confirmation that match. So handwriting that little bit of information on anywhere, bottom, top, side, wherever you want to write it, just find an inconspicuous place yeah. and, and put that data in. That's the key to, to getting paid. To getting paid, and that's what we're all here for. So, okay. Yeah, and again, the the contents of the package, the pickup, the drop off, that that's all federal law. Um, it's not just a nice thing to have. So, um, if you get pulled over at a scale, they may want to see your logbook. Well, I'm listening to me. I'm dating myself. <laughs> your your ELD, uh, but they also might want to see your uh, bill of lading. So have that in a safe, clean, dry space, um, and and somewhere where you can reach reach it in a very easy manner yeah as we said in the last video have your paperwork in order it makes things simple that's right and stay ahead of it um, take a picture of this and send it to your your administrative world uh, when you take a picture for us we we need it to be done in a PDF yeah. uh, a simple PDF um, because some of the factoring companies won't take it as a picture or a JPEG or anything else uh, put all four corners in the picture. Uh, you don't need to have pictures of seats or whatever tables behind it. Bring that camera right up to where all four corners are in. Make sure it's really clean and clear. Yeah, we can crop it, but we don't want to crop your, your seats out of it. So. And always remember, the broker is trying to figure out how not to pay you. So if this stuff isn't clear, if it's not done in the manner that they want it done in, they're going to reject it. Yeah, and it'll take longer than you want. You won't get your money. And that delays things. So stay uh, stay making money and stay profitable. We'll, we'll try to do everything on our end to help keep you moving and uh, make this simple. Thanks for stopping by.